Xbox emulation is considered by many to be a lost cause. That might have been true five years ago, but Zemu has really come a long way. The developers are hard at work to deliver the best possible experience on PC, but that doesn't mean it's close to the finished article. And in this video, I'll run the games on modest hardware. This is to ensure that most users can relate to the emulator's current performance. So let's get started. A dozen covenant superior battleships against a single house of With those odds, I'm content with three, make that four kills. First and foremost, we'll have a look at Halo Combat Evolved. For some of you, this may be the only game you're interested in playing. And if it is, have I got good news for you. It runs almost flawlessly, save for a few hitches when there's lots of action on screen. But the frame rate will recover quickly to give you an even 30 FPS. Honestly, I was impressed by this one. There wouldn't be any cameras. And you told me. Its sequel didn't fare as well. I picked up on graphical anomalies almost instantly. In some cutscenes the characters were transparent, or the shadows glitched out on floor surfaces. It was hard to ignore, so I can't put it in the playable category yet. Still, I do believe it's better than a year ago, when I played it last on Zemu. I believe that high-end computers can run Soul Calibur 2 at full speed, but I'm afraid medium-range hardware can't cut the mustard. During my playthrough, the frame rate was all over the place, and this made my experience rather painful. With fighting games, performance is paramount, and too often Soul Calibur feels like it's running in slow motion. Blood Wake had the opposite problem. For some reason, it just kept speeding up. I don't know why, but it happened when I pressed a button on my controller. It's a strange glitch, but I don't know if the developers are aware of it. Blackstone ran fine, but the sound effects didn't seem right to me. I've only played it on the emulator, so please tell me if it sounds normal to you. The Dead or Alive games were a mixed bag. Usually they performed well when in-game, but as soon as cutscenes played, things started crawling. The same happened during replays for some reason. Here is a classic example. Watch how it turns into a slideshow. I should mention that the extreme volleyball spin-off game seemed to run mostly fine, with minor frame dips here and there. It's completely playable. Since about a year ago, Burnout Revenge appears to have regressed somewhat. Performance has slid down to mostly linger in the low 20s. I suppose you can still give it a go, but I would recommend that you wait for improvements, or play it on PCSX2 instead. Panzer Dragoon Order suffers from intermittent frame drops. It happens when there's lots of lights visible on screen. I also saw minor texture glitches, although performance seems to be this game's biggest issue. Outrun 2006 has several bugs on the emulator, and they really detract from the overall experience. Performance is also hanging in the low 20s. Both Star Wars Battlefront games have performance issues, depending on which maps you're playing. Some maps are worse than others, but the audio crackle can become really bad at times. Unfortunately, Battle for Bikini Bottom has major visual glitches. Otherwise, performance seems to be fine for the most part. I wouldn't consider it fully playable yet. Pac-Man 2 is almost perfect, except for Pac-Man himself, who appears to be glowing like a nuclear tennis ball. I can assure you he's not supposed to look like that. Blinks, the time sweeper, ran at a very unstable frame rate for me. I think more capable hardware can run this at full speed. But who wants to spend thousands of dollars to play games from 20 years ago? It doesn't make sense. The Crash games have made some progress on the emulator. With the exception of Crash to Insanity, they can be considered playable. Wrath of Cortex hovered in the mid-20s at times, but it was mostly okay. While it couldn't maintain a stable 60 frames, Crash Nitro Kart didn't feel sluggish at all. In fact, I had a lot of fun playing this. Tag Team Racing was a decent experience on the emulator. I stayed close to 30 frames at all times, and there weren't any glitches either. But like I said, Crash to Insanity got the short end of the stick here, suffering from slowdowns throughout my playthrough. The developers clearly value accuracy above performance right now, which makes sense.
We will now have a look at the GTA series, starting with GTA 3. It ran okay, with occasional frame drops in certain areas. It should be said that these games have always been superior on the Xbox, so if the developers can sort out performance, that would be so welcome. Speaking of performance, Vice City had it especially bad. Its frames dropped into the single digits, and the game even seemed to freeze at certain times. It's a real shame, because the emulation is perfectly accurate. Ballers! Drive-by! Incoming! This may come as a surprise to most of you, but San Andreas was actually fine, save for minor glitches and frame hiccups during more intense scenes. It was more stable than GTA 3, which is an amazing feat when you think about it. Color me impressed. Conker's Bad Fur Day was running at a good frame rate for most of my playthrough. I experienced some loss in frames when I swam in the water, but otherwise it was fine. Winback 2 had very obvious glitches, but apart from that it had no other issues. Even performance was great. The flat out games had minor audio crackles, and to me it seemed a little worse in flat out too, but overall, the emulation was decent with these racing games. As for 2D fighting games, I only tested two. The first was Street Fighter Anniversary Collection. It ran buttery smooth and looked great. The second was King of Fighters Neo Wave, and there were no problems here either. Jet Set Radio Future was as close to perfectly emulated as it gets. It just had minor sound issues, although you have to strain your ears to hear it. Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb is especially bad on the emulator. It hovered around 15 frames if I was lucky, but most of the time it dropped to 10 or 11 frames. That's unplayable. The Midnight Club series is very popular among racing gamers, and Midnight Club 2 was awesome on Xbox. Unfortunately, the performance is terrible on the emulator, as you can see. Silent Hill 2 runs pretty good, with rare frame drops. For the most part, it stuck to 30 frames a second. I will add though that it's better on PS2, so maybe you want to emulate that version instead. As for Silent Hill 4, I noticed that performance loss was a bit more common. It's still playable, but if you own the PC version, that would still be the best way to go. Of the Need for Speed games, I only tested Underground, and if it's any indication of the other games in the series, I doubt whether any of them run all that well on the emulator. This is how far I got on Dragon's Lair 3D before it froze and crashed. Now I will showcase a bunch of random games that are actually playable on the emulator. So sit back and relax.